In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one true God. Glory be to Him, and may His grace and mercy be upon us forever. Amen. Welcome to another episode of Walking the Way with the Saints, brought to you by Urho the Way. My name is Merrin Thomas, and I am from St. Basil's Jacobite Church in Sacramento, USA. Today we will be looking at the life and teachings of St. John the Short, one of the greatest monastic saints of the Church. St. John the Short is called Abba Ioannis P. Kolobos in Coptic. Kolobos means shortened in Greek or Coptic. He is one of the great desert fathers of the early church. He lived in the desert of Skeet in Egypt, now called Wadi al Natrun, uh, around the 4th century AD. He is remembered in the divine liturgy of St. Basil, used by the Coptic Orthodox Church, along with the other great monastic saints like uh, St. Anthony the Great, St. Macarius the Great, and St. Pishol. The Coptic Orthodox Church remembers St. John the Short on the 20th of the Coptic month of Baba which falls on October 30th according to our Gregorian calendar. We don't know much about his early life, but we know that he was born around AD 339 near Thebes in Upper Egypt to a poor but holy Christian family. From a young age, he had a strong desire for the monastic life. This led him to spend his time in remote places, which would prepare him for the harsh way of life that would be required of him. At age 18, he left his home and settled in the desert of Skeet, uh, which is uh, to the north. So as we can see on the map, Thebes is here in the south. And he traveled all the way to Skeet here, which is between Cairo and Alexandria. When St. John started practicing his asceticism on his own at first, God let him know that he should look for a teacher or a guide. And St. John desired then to become a disciple of Abba Pemwa, who was also the teacher of St. Pishoi. Uh, Abba Pemwa was a disciple of St. Anthony the Great, and he was known as a strict teacher in Skeet. Abba Pemwa at first tried to discourage St. John from the harsh monastic life, which would require a great deal of sacrifice. But an angel appeared to him in the night, asking him to accept St. John as a monk. Abba Pemwa then prepared the, a set of monastic clothes for St. John and fasted and prayed over them for three whole days. Uh, when St. John finally put on the clothes, Abba Pemwa saw an angel making the sign of the cross over them. One of the most famous stories about St. John is the story of the Tree of Obedience. Abba Pemwa wanted to test St. John and in one of the first tasks he gave to him, he commanded St. John to plant a wooden stick in the desert and water it every day till it bore fruit. Even though the river was two miles away from the stick, St. John completed his task in great obedience and simplicity without a word of complaining. When three years had gone by, the stick started sprouting leaves and produced much fruit. The old Abba Pemwa was astonished and gathered the fruit and distributed it to his fellow monks in the church saying, Take and eat the fruit of obedience. That tree, later called the tree of obedience, still stands in the same spot to this day. This story demonstrates one of the most important things we can learn from St. John which is the value of obedience. Abba Pemwa passed away in AD 374 after 12 years of sickness, during which St. John served him faithfully. One of Abba Pemwa's last wishes was that St. John continue his monastic activity next to the tree of obedience, and St. John dug a cave next to the tree and started practicing a strict asceticism. His clothes were made of palm leaves. He dug an underground room inside the cave, in which he spent the whole week fasting and being absorbed in ceaseless prayer. Soon many monks came to him to learn from him and follow his example. And soon after that, a well was dug, a church was built, and a monastery grew around the tree of obedience. This monastery, the monastery of St. John the Short, remained open till the 17th century. 
the Coptic Pope Theophilus of Alexandria ordained St. John as hegumen and abbot over the monastery. One of St. John's famous gifts was uh, the gift of knowing who was worthy and who wasn't worthy of partaking of the Holy Sacrament. The Coptic Synaxarium mentions that he knew them as if their hearts were open before his spiritual eyes. St. John was responsible for the salvation of many people. One famous story involves St. Paisa. Paisa was a young woman who, after the death of her parents, opened her house to care for the poor, the monks and the strangers. Unfortunately, because of her great generosity, she ran out of all her wealth and with no money to survive, she fell into a life of sin and prostitution. The monks of Skeet, being concerned about her, asked St. John to help her and he went to visit her. Her doorman let him in, and Paisa, thinking that he was one of her customers, sat ready in her bed. He sat by her and said, What did Jesus ever do to you for you to behave this way? And then he started crying. Shocked to see him in tears, she asked, Why are you crying, father? I see Satan controlling you. How could I not cry? He replied. Moved by his love and concern, she asked, Is there still hope for me, father? It is, he said. Then show me the way, she said. She rose, left everything she had, and followed him into the desert. As he was leading her to one of the nuns' monasteries, they slept in the desert at night. During the prayer of midnight, St. John saw a vision. The soul of Paisa was being carried to heaven by angels. He heard a voice telling him that her repentance was found perfect before God. In the morning, he found Paisa dead. This story teaches us how much God desires to save us and how he is waiting for that moment when we turn back to return to him. This also reminds us of Jesus and his parable of the workers in which God rewards even the workers who turn up at the eleventh hour. The Coptic Orthodox Church remembers St. Paisa on August 8th. May the prayers of St. Paisa help us to all repent of our sins and return back to God. Many of St. John's teachings are gathered in the sayings of the Desert Fathers. We will not look at all of them today, but you can read more in my blog post on our website. Check the link in the description below. Even though the monastic saints lived a life very different from most of us today, the wisdom that they give us can help us to grow in our spiritual life. Let us focus on one such quote from St. John, which acts like a summary of all his teachings, and I thought this could benefit us today. St. John said, I think it is best that a man should have a little bit of all the virtues. Therefore, get up early every day and acquire the beginning of every virtue and every commandment of God. Use great patience with fear and long-suffering in the love of God with all the fervor of your soul and body. Exercise great humility. Bear with interior distress. Be vigilant and pray often with reverence, with purity of speech and control of your eyes. When you are despised, do not get angry. Be at peace and do not render evil for evil. Do not pay attention to the faults of others and do not try to compare yourself with others, knowing that you are less than every created thing. Renounce everything material and that which is of the flesh. Live by the cross in warfare, in poverty of spirit, in voluntary spiritual asceticism, in fasting, penitence and tears, in discernment, in purity of soul, taking hold of that which is good. Do your work in peace. Persevere in keeping vigil, in hunger and thirst, in cold and nakedness, and in sufferings. Shut yourself in a tomb as though you were already dead, so that at all times you will think death is near. When the Berbers raided Skeet around AD 395, St. John fled across the Nile towards the Red Sea and remained there till his departure. When he was asked why he left, he replied that he did not leave because he was afraid of death, but because he feared a Berber would slay him and go to hell. For though he was against 
the Berber's worship, he is his brother in form. One Saturday evening, he fell sick and sent his attendant to bring him something from the nearby village. When he came back, he saw the soul of St. John, surrounded by the saints and angels singing before them. Among the saints present was St. Anthony the Great, the father of all monks. St. John's body was found kneeling to the ground. He then treated the body with honor and carried him to the village, where it became a great source of healing and salvation. St. John was the spiritual teacher of another great monastic saint, St. Arsenius. In AD 515, the relics of St. John were brought back to Skeet, and his relics are now kept in the monastery of St. Macarius the Great in Wadi El Natrun. The monastery also houses the relics of St. John the Baptist, St. Elisha the Prophet, and the three saintly Macarius. As we can see in this picture, uh, this is from inside the monastery, and these are the relics of St. John the Short. Finally, we conclude with a short hymn from the Syriac Orthodox Divine Liturgy. Dukrono moriuhanon orko valel bashemayo vailendya kar dukrono knetadron baslavotok stomen kalos kuriela ison. May the prayers of St. John the Short always be with us and help us to always remember God and to strive to be united to Him. God bless all of you.